Have I shown you guys how to use the source command? I'm not going to test you on this, but um, it's good to know because you're going to have to use it um, next week. So let me quickly show you that. If you want, uh, if you want to follow along, you can. I'm recording it, so you don't have to. But if you want to, just open up a text editor like Notepad or Notepad++ and just write any query, whatever you want. So I'm going to write um, use tile select star from rep, and then I'm going to say select star from uh, orders, right? So a couple queries. I'm going to save it. All right. Um, save it somewhere where you can find it. So put it on your desktop or somewhere easy to retrieve it. All right, once you got it, go ahead and open up the command line. And open up the SQL command line. And then uh, what you can do, if you have your desktop uh, or wherever that file is, mine's right there on the desktop, and I type in source, space, and then the file path to that file, or I can just drag it on there, and it'll make the file path for me. And I hit enter, and it runs those commands that were in that file. Okay? So you've seen me do that before. That's when, how I reset the database. I've got the file right here, right? And that resets, completely resets my database, right? And nukes the old one and puts in the, the latest, you know, the current version. And the reason I do that all the time is because... In class, I often mess with things, add records, delete records, change structures, just to teach something. You guys are going to get this file um, next week, uh, and then we'll, we'll reinstall your database from scratch. So that way, there's no errors. It'll be 100% uh, accurate and correct. All right, so any questions about source command? That's just a little extra bonus there that I'm throwing at you. You good? Okay, so here's the real reason we're here. Review. So I've got the book right here. And if you turn, you don't have to open it, but I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do here. So first of all, chapter one. Chapter one is um, the intro. Oh my gosh, I can't type. Intro to the databases. Okay? Chapter one is the introduction to the databases. So this was the, the introduction to the databases. This was the section um, where... I gave you those little printout PDFs of the tables and the records and the structure and everything, and I was asking you questions like, uh, give me the highest number of sales, or what product has the most sales, or those kinds of questions where we were learning about the tables and what the fields were and all this kind of stuff. So that's what that, what that is. Anything from that section is game for the, for the midterm, um, but it's mostly just getting to know the tables. Now, a lot of those questions I asked you, you might recall, I, I said things like, how many customers does um, sales rep Campos have, right? Remember, I'd ask you a question like that. And you'd have to go look in the rep table and see that, oh, Campos is number 15 or whatever. And then you'd go over to the customer table and you'd del display it and you'd count how many 15s there were. Well, now you guys know how to write queries to do that, right? So you can answer those, time, those types of questions by writing a query in the database because the, the midterm is open book, okay? All right, so that's the kind of stuff to expect on Chapter 1. Any questions about that? Let's head back into the modules there. Uh, this is module one right here. Um, yeah, so basic terminology is what we covered in that one and meet the databases. That was where I introduced you to the databases and what they are. Anything that was on your module one quiz is game. Um, and in fact, some of the questions from your module one quiz may reappear on your midterm because they're from the same question bank that I used um, for the module one quiz, okay? So that's what's going on there. All right. All right, let's take a look at chapter two here. Chapter two is uh, design uh, data, so database design fundamentals. All right. All right, and so this is where we talked about normalization, functional dependency, primary keys and foreign keys, all that stuff. We also learned a little about the command line, entities, attributes, and relations, uh, keys and dependencies, uh, and then you had these homework assignments here, attributes and relations, keys and dependencies. Then here's the normalization homework, the entity relationship diagrams. And if you check these out each week here in module two, these are the lectures, right? This is lecture number one, lecture number two. 
So if we go into, say, entities, attributes, and relations, sometimes there's not a lot in here, but usually the PowerPoint is there, and there's the PowerPoint that we use that day in class. Okay, it's a PDF, but it's, it's the PowerPoint. Okay, so there's, that's good information for you to have there. All right, so what questions do we have about anything there? This is where most of the questions came in my class the other day. Are you guys, you guys have any questions about anything here? Um, yeah. Can you go over, like, reading it for, like, your test, you know, where they have, like, underlining? Sure, yeah. Uh, so yeah. I, I did really bad on that. Okay. All right, so um, let's take a look here. Uh, so you're talking about this notation with the parentheses, mm -hmm. right? Okay, this is really simple notation, right? It's the table name and then the fields. Um, number of songs. That's it. And that's all it is. It's, it's the table structure. If one of them's underlined, that one's the primary key. There's literally nothing more to it than that. Yeah. Even if it wasn't a primary key, it still would be dependent on it. Yeah. Yep. What's that? Like that, that's, that's one thing that I kind of got confused with is what's dependent. Yep. So dependency is simple, too. Um, let's, let me get rid of that blue underline that's bugging me. There you go. Okay. So dependency is very simple. Um, if I gave you the album ID, could you find any other given field in the table? Then those fields are dependent on the album ID, the end. That, that means really nothing more to it than that. So if I gave you the name, could you find any other given field? I would say no, because what if two albums have the same name? Right? Um, there, I can't think of an example in the real world, but I guarantee you that there are two albums out there that have the same name. In fact, there are two bands out there with the same name, um, and some bands have changed their name because of it. Um, I, I, can't, I know there's a specific one. I can't think of it. Sorry. My music database is shut down in my head right now. What's that? Yeah, but those probably wouldn't be in the same database, right? But you're, but you're right. So how about if I gave you the year, could you find one, any given one specific album? No, of course not, because there's tons of albums released every year. If I gave you the number of songs, would you be able to find a specific album? No. If I gave you the name, you would not be able to find a specific album. Now, coincidentally, your database may have no albums with the same name, but that is something that could happen, right? Whereas with an album ID, particularly if it's a primary key. You definitely can't have duplicates if it's a primary key. But even if it weren't a primary key, generally speaking, why is it the ID? Because we're trying to be unique here, right? So it's certainly a candidate key. What about concatenating? So it would look like that. It's the same thing. There's no difference. Oh, okay. So then everything would just be dependent on the name. Yeah, now this would be a bad concatenated key, but if I, that's what it would look like in the structure. Let me get rid of that highlight again. Why it keeps doing that. So in, let me, let's get a better example of a concatenated primary key. Oh, there's that stupid thing. Why won't it ignore it permanently? Oh, is that all it is? But I usually, when I ignore it, it should just be enough. All right, order line. Okay. The order line is uh, the item num, uh, the, uh, the um, order num, I almost said album num, uh, description, no, not description, uh, num, ordered and quoted price. So that is the uh, order line table and that is the primary key, right? So the, here becomes the question again. If I said, if I gave you an order number, just an order number, would you be able to come back with a specific quoted price? One single specific quoted price? You would not. And so we can prove that. Select star 
from order line. Oh, I'm in the colonial database. There we go. Okay, so if I gave you the order number 5610, that might give you 1095, or that might give you 1399. If I gave you 51617, it might give you this price, or it might give you this price. So having just the order number is not enough, okay? So the, there's no functional dependency on quoted price to an order number. Um, how about uh, if I gave you the number ordered? Can that give you one specific record? No, no because there's number ordered, uh, let's see, five right there and five right there and five right there. So that's three different records that have that value. So the whole idea of functional dependency is if you have the field that everything's functionally dependent on, if you had that value, then you would be able to get only one specific record, no matter what. That's functional dependency. So if I had the item number and the order number, then that would give me one unique record, right? That would give me one specific number ordered. So right here, this example where I said 51610, that's not enough, but if I couple that with the item number, there is no other possible combination where you have that order number and that item number. So that primary key makes that return this one specific record that has 25 and 1095. Make sense? All right, other questions. Now this can lead us to a discussion about normalization and the difference between second normal form and third normal form, which is the conversation we had in the other class. And this question here about depending on a part of a primary key or whatever, it ties right into that. So you guys wanna cover that? Okay, let's look at that. Let me show you where you guys can find these slides. Um, in, uh, what does it mean when I can't see now? My vision's all blurred. <laughs> oh, we we're just recording a lecture and Jeff died right in the middle of the lecture. All right, uh, where is it? Well, Normalization, there we go. Is the sure, yeah. If you can figure out my YouTube password and everything. Okay. So, uh, normalization, week five, underneath module two. Here's week five. Uh, we're looking at normalization. I'm pretty sure that's where the slide should be. Yeah, there it is. So this PDF right here. Oh, no, I never get a flu shot. Every time I get a flu shot, I get, I, I get the flu. This isn't a flu. It's just a bad head cold. I, well, it's not the money I'm worried about. It's just I, every time I get a flu shot, I get really sick. All right. So I think you guys are pretty good with first normal form. Is that a safe bet? Right? First normal form, um, here's the quick version. Basically, each field has one unique piece of data in it. That's all it is, right? That's pretty much it. So this is bad, right? We have this is bad first normal form. This is not in first normal form. You got two records in there. How do we solve that problem? Just another, you know, break it out to another table, right? Yeah. Okay. This is one way to solve it, but it's not a good example of how to solve it because what if they have three phone numbers or four phone numbers or five phone numbers, right? So this is the idea here. Uh, this is also a bad example um, for a different reason, um, and this is where we end up having duplication here, right? So the whole, the best example, the best way to solve this is to break it out into two tables, okay? All right, so let's move on to second order form. This is one that throws people off. And more specifically, what's the difference between second and third, okay? So here's the definition right here. And again, you guys have access to this PDF. First of all, it has to be first order form. I think that's a given. Secondly though, each column is functionally dependent on the whole primary key, not part of a primary key, okay? So in this scenario, let me undo that. In this scenario, is it even possible to be dependent on part of a primary key in that first table? It's not, because there's not, there's a, the whole primary key is one field. Now this, potentially, if the table weren't structured properly, could have that problem. Now, it doesn't happen to have it because it's structured right, but because I do have a dual primary key here, then it could be possible to have a problem. So let's take a look at that with some examples here. Our whole goal is just to remove partial dependencies. That's, that's our purpose right here. All right, so take a look at this. This is um, the, basically the order line table, but I've added a couple things to it. 
to demonstrate a bad example of second normal form or a table that's not in second normal form. So first of all, let's ignore this primary key here. Okay, that's a field I made up right here. So just ignore that field for the time being. Okay, just look at everything else though. Everything else here, order num, item num, num ordered and quoted price, those are right there. I've just added one more field so I can purposely make this uh, not a properly normalized table, okay? And that field is description. So knowing the definition that, second, that not in second normal form means you have a partial dependency, see how can you guys explain to me what is the problem here? Very good. The description is dependent upon item. That's correct. Yeah, so the problem here is that description is functionally dependent on item num and item num alone. That's a problem. That's dependent on part of a primary key. Because remember, order num and item num is the complete primary key. So description is dependent upon part of a primary key. That is not second normal form. That is a bad example. It's not in second normal form. Okay? All right. So you're going to find that 99.99% .99 of the time, to correct a bad case of normalization, you're going to make another table. That's the way you're going to do it almost every time. Okay? And so here we go. What I've done now is I've broken out the description. I've, remo I've just removed it. All right? And on this particular case, we didn't have to make another table because the item num table already existed. We just had repeat information. So why is this bad to have this here? What's the harm? I mean, it gives us a nice, clear view of what the description is. Why is that bad? It actually, it won't affect performance. If anything, it might be a little quicker. Yeah. Because if the description changes on the original, now you have to come back to this one and change it on the Yeah, original. so exactly right. So now I've got description in this table, which you don't see it here because it's not really there. But also, you have it in this table. So now... First of all, every time I enter a record into this table, this made-up table, I have to type the description in. What if I typo, right? I can't sort things properly. Uh, secondly, even if I don't typo, um, let's say that they, uh, we, we've talked about this before, rocking horse. What if we decide to start selling plastic rocking horses and wooden ones and we want to distinguish them? And we decide to just turn rocking horse into plastic rocking horse and then we add a new product called wooden. Well, now, in the, this table, everywhere we see rocking horse, I'd have to go in there and change it, right? Also, every time we add a new product, right? I add it here, and then um, I still have to retype it over here whenever I sell that product. So it's just bad. Now, remember a minute ago I told you to ignore this primary key, okay? Now I want you to not ignore it. Now let's imagine that this is the primary key that it's not a concatenated primary key, okay, that this is the primary key. So it's no longer a concatenated primary key. It's a single one field primary key. Is it still a bad version of second normal form or is it corrected? Well, let's look at the definition again. Each column functionally depends on the whole primary key, and there's the catch right there, including candidate keys. So isn't this a candidate key right here? Yeah, anything that could uniquely identify the record is a candidate key. Anything that could act as the primary key is a candidate key. And so this is still functionally dependent on part of a candidate key. So it's still a problem, okay? And the, what it comes down to is, it's, it's just simply a problem because it's duplicate data. It's information that's already in another table or could be in another table, okay? And so this is still a problem. So this solves the problem. I just remove that field, and it gets us back to basically what the table originally looked like, except I have this extra field here. But in the original table, we don't have the primary key, right? We just have these fields right here, okay? All right, so that's the correct version, and so is this, which is the actual table itself. Okay? Make sense? All right. So here's another bad example. So here's a primary key right here. 
these two fields here. Um, what's the problem here? Is there something that's functionally dependent on part of the primary key? So in other words, is something functionally dependent on either this field or on this field, but not both? Well, you could also argue that model full name is dependent on manufacturer, but it's not. There you go. Yeah, the country is dependent upon the, the actual manufacturer, right? Dental Fresh is in America, Kobayashi is in Japan, and then also note we have duplication here. Hoch is in Germany, Hoch is in Germany, okay? Ford is in Italy. Okay, so this is dependent on this field right here. So we have a partial dependency. It's, that's the, this field is dependent upon this field. But the problem is that is the primary key. And so you have a dependency that's on part of a primary key. All right, so now um, with the problem though, we have this field right here being dependent on part of the primary key. So how do we fix it? Yeah, new table, right? That's always gonna be the answer. So now we have the manufacturer table and now the country is dependent on this. And notice how we got rid of this duplicate fort and this duplicate hosh, right? So now it just has one there. Now over here it's still duplicated because just like in our order line table, right, we have duplication, right? We've got a 10 here and a 10 here, or we have an FD11 here and an FD11 here. That's fine, but the combination of the two will never be duplicated, right? That combination will never be duplicated. So now we're good, okay? Now it's in second normal form. All right. So again, the idea of second normal form is every column functionally depends on the whole primary key, not part of it, okay? So we remove all partial dependencies. All right, third normal form. This one is that all fields can be determined only by the primary key in the table and no other column. So what that means is this. All right, so look at this table here. What do we see as a problem here? Remember the definition here that all fields or columns can be determined only, I should bold that word, by the primary key and no other column. So where's the problem here? What's that? What's wrong with rep number? Um, so I would argue that rep number should be there. Yeah. So do you have a uh, customer number uh, go to a different table or customer name, sorry, customer name goes to its own table or customer number? Well, this is the customer table. Oh, so the rep should be on its own table then and they should have a joint table for the two of them? A joint table? What is the specific problem, though? You guys are offering solutions. What is the problem? The problem is that the first name and last name of the rep are on this table, and they could be on their own table. Okay, so why is... So based on our definition, you're correct. Those two fields should not be there, the first name and last name. But based on our definition of being in third normal form, where all fields can be determined only by the primary key, um, and here's a little hint here. Uh, we're trying to remove transited dependencies. So what is wrong with these being here? They rely on rep number. Yeah, and rep number relies on customer num, right? So you have a scenario where this, and last name, but we'll just pick on this one, is dependent on this, functionally dependent on that, and this is functionally dependent on that, right? So in other words, if I gave you customer num, any given customer number, you could get back a single specific one record. Um, so if I give you the number 334, you're guaranteed to get this record. If I give you the number 440, you're guaranteed to get that record. Okay? Well, if I were to give you the number 45 in this table here, let me clear these lines out. If I were to give you the number 45, 
You're not guaranteed to get this whole record, but you are guaranteed to get this. Let me make sure that I'm actually still running here. Yep, okay. All right, let me try that again. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so again, if I give you the number 45 here, that is not guaranteed that I'll get this record, right? As you can see, I might get this record. I might get this record, okay? But giving me the number 45 does guarantee that I will get Hoi Tien every time. So that's a functional dependency there, okay? So Hoi and Tien are both functionally dependent upon rep, and rep is functionally dependent upon customer number. So that's a transitive dependency, right? And think about your days of algebra, right? If, if X equals Y and Y equals Z, then X equals Z, that whole idea, that's a transitive property. It's the same kind of thing here. We're not dealing with things that are equal, but we're just, it's the same idea that we have this problem where first name is dependent on rep num and rep num is dependent upon customer num. Anytime you have this is dependent on that and that's dependent on something else, you are not in third normal form, okay? So that's a transitive dependency. How do we solve it? Make a new table, right? So here's the corrected version, which is what's in the database, right? I took out some of the other fields for display purposes, but this is the other database, the, the actual data. All right, so let's take a look at another example of this scenario here. Here is another version that is not in third normal form, okay? So what's the problem here? What's dependent on something that's dependent on something else? The date of birth and the winner itself are both dependent on the ID, which is dependent upon the tournament and year, which is the primary key in this case. Okay, how do we solve it? New table. New table, yep. So we have the winner table, which has a winner ID, and it has their name and their birth date. And then we just put the winner ID in here. And so here's the primary key, tournament and year, and that's the winner ID. And now, through winner ID, I can get this other data. Now. We have not talked about joins yet. That's next time after the midterm, okay? But the reason this works is because joins, I'll get you in a second, is because joins exist. I can write a query that will join these two tables for the output. It doesn't actually physically join them, but it makes an output that joins them together. And so I can get output that looks like this, but it's not actually stored in the table like that, right? And that's the way you want to build your databases. Yeah? That's why it's the primary key is the tournament and the year. Yeah, it's a dual primary key. Yeah. So you can see they're both underlined, right? So the Indiana Invitational 1998 is one. That's a primary key. There might be an Indiana Invitational 1999. In fact, there is right there. Look at that. See? But that's a unique primary key, right? Okay. All right. Other questions? Okay, so third normal form. Again, all fields can be determined only by the primary key in the table and no other column. We're removing all transitive dependencies. Okay, that's it. How do we feel about that? We good? Okay. How about Boyce Cod? Or three and a half normal form? Okay, real quick. This is a scenario which technically this table is still, still in third normal form, but you see that there's some duplication here. We have home and home and cell and cell and home again. Okay. So anytime you have something like this where it's repeated, entry that the, the user would have to type in the same thing over and over again. Put it in its own table, like this. Now we have a, type, a phone type table, and we have a phone type ID, and then the name. And now we can put the type ID over here, and if I want to display it with the name, I can write a join that spits out the data looking like this. But these are pretty rare cases overall, okay? All right, any questions? All right, groovy. Okay, let's go back to our notes here. Uh, let's take a look at chapter three. Chapter three is creating tables and databases. Creating tables and databases. Okay, and that is, where are we here? Go back to modules. Okay, and this is module, by the way, for the most part, the chapter, 
lines up with the module number. Module 3 is chapter 3, okay? It doesn't have the same name, but it is. So this is where we talked about CRUD, create, read, update, and delete, or create, retrieve, update, and delete. And this is creating databases and tables, things like the alter keyword, the modify keyword, the create keyword, the drop keyword, all that stuff, okay? That's all part of this, all right? Also in this section, we talked about inserting data, um, and so that's something to be considering. So basically, this chapter is all about CRUD, right? For table, CRUD for tables, databases, and um, records. All right. Um, chapter four is where we're at. That's where we just finished. Chapter four is single table queries, right? Non-joins, which is chapter four here. And here we are, the great and powerful clause, what we've already talked about. Um, and then adding data, inserting data, sorting, grouping, all this stuff. This is all in chapter four, which is called single table queries. When we get back from uh, fall break, we'll be talking about multiple table queries. That's where joins come in, okay? And we looked at subqueries the other day. We'll learn how to do subqueries with multiple tables as well. All right, so any questions about chapter three or chapter four? Anything you want to review, look at, remember? Any syntax questions you have? You good? Okay. Well, if there are no questions, I'm going to stop the recording. We're not done yet, but I'll stop the recording. Going once, going twice.